Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am back here at the Blue Chip Mine. First time in about a year and a half back to the Blue Chip because of some logging that was going on in the area. I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to see what I can find. I'm excited to show you the adventure. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. So in not coming in, in a year and a half, this place is overgrown. I just spent the last half hour cutting a path from my quad to the mine shaft. There was so much bush and greenery in that little area. It's insane. And actually to drive the quad from the truck in here, I had to just go by memory where the road was. It was completely overgrown crazy what happens when no one goes into a site for so long. Just cut into the main adit. This is the number two adit. This is sort of the, the big one. This is the one that you can walk in nice and safe, nice and stable. I don't plan to do anything inside here today. Might show you around a bit, but I don't plan to do anything really inside. Just checking on it, making sure it's still, you know, in one piece and no one's been here. My signs are still in place and everything is good and kosher. Always love the shot from standing inside of an adit, looking out at the greenery and bright light. Dark inside, green and bright outside. And the path up to number three at it doesn't seem to be as overgrown, but still needs a bit of cutting to get through. It's up there. Good enough. Let's go see what we got up the hill. There we are, the number three at it. And a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. There's the hill I tried to fall down last year. That could have been the end of me if I actually went over. It was darn close. There are different reasons I go into my mine sites like this. Sometimes I'm, you know, exploring. Sometimes I'm prospecting, looking for the value in the stone, looking to see if I can find the spot that has the best, you know, gold. Sometimes I'm reclamating, you know, cleaning up after old mining. Today, I'm actually in the process of collecting material. I know where the material is. I know where the value is. Today, I'm actually going to take a bucket or two or ten or however many I can get out of here for the actual material. I actually need some gold. So I'm going to a place that I know has gold. I'm going to take as much material as I can, take it home and process it, and get the hard rock gold out of this material. And that's just because, you know, on my website I sell pay dirt. One of my pay dirts is a hard rock mix crush, and I'm running out of gold for it. So I'm here today to harvest some gold, to collect some gold uh, for the value of gold. Typically, I'm just out prospecting. Today, actually getting some gold. So this spot right here, Mike Bryson and I, about three, four years ago, we actually brought the high banker up and we're actually running material right here and found some, um, you know, fairly good gold right here. So this is where I'm going to go and do some collecting today. Not only am I going to be collecting uh, the crush, the weathered out crush, the weathered out material here that has hard rock gold in it, I'm also going to be trying to find some good specimens as well. Beautiful quartz and pyrotite, maybe some pyrites, maybe some arsenopyrite, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, all in one nice rock that people can use in their rock collection on their mantle to see what, you know, gold ore looks like. But I got a whole lot of equipment way down at the quad to carry up here. But of course, first you want to see inside the attic. Again, I'm not working inside the attics today. Looks like how I left it. Last time I was here digging this material, I got kind of frustrated. It was so hard to actually get anything. So I'm doing things a little differently today. I have my Honda generator, carried it in, and I went to the thrift store and bought myself a cheap shop vac. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape out all the cracks and crevices here and vacuum it up and see if that's easier to get, you know, a bin full of material than trying to scrape and dig and curse and swear and, you know, all the things I did last time. And this here is the material that I am pretty sure has some pretty nice gold in it. Let's get vacuuming. Oh, 
Well, that works crazy good. I don't know how full I am, but I must be getting pretty darn full in there. And that just cleared out that little spot right in there in no time. And so much easier than trying to dig. I like it. I think I'm gonna clear off the you know, biomass on top of here, the debris from the trees, and do that layer next. You can tell the, by the weight of some of them whether they're that iron stone or not. That uh, pyrotite goes really rusty like this, but when you pick up a rock of pyrotite, you know from its weight because it's just solid iron, it's heavy. And you can't tell by the rust on the surface because so many of these rocks are so completely rusted, but you know, they're light, so that's not them. This looks like a good little spot to vacuum. If I get rid of the rocks first, I don't have to fight them when I'm vacuuming it up. This is going amazingly well. Vacuum is full. I've got two buckets down below. I'm gonna go uh, decant it into the two buckets and carry those back you know, down to the quad. Take the quad back out of the truck and get some water because I'm dying of thirst. Did that, did that, did there. Huge amount in there. You see quartz up in this one. That is promising. I like that. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe up there, maybe up there. Who knows where? Now I said I was here harvesting material, not prospecting, but you can never take the prospector out of me. Uh, the main seam comes right through here, and you know, the holy grail up here, what we've been looking for every time we work it, is to see if we can find the main seam coming through. And you know, we've dug all the way down here, we don't see the seam, we don't see the seam, we don't see the seam. Somewhere in there, the seam has to cut through, and we figure when we start uh, collecting the material that's right at the seam, that's when we're going to start getting the richest material. Guessing from the strike and dip and everything of that seam, it should come right through there. Though, as we clear off the bedrock, we still haven't seen the quartz seam anywhere. So maybe what I'll do is I'll push back through there for the next load and see, clearing it off, if maybe I discover something. That would be awesome if we could find out where the quartz here is actually, the quartz and pyrotite, the iron pyrotite, the quartz is actually coming from. Well, that filter's seen better days. <laughs> Luckily, it's a $10 vacuum. And there we go. Put that in those. So it looks like the vacuum is just less than two full buckets. And I think I want to take four buckets today. So let's do this all one more time. Two buckets worth back at the truck. Let's get two more right up in there. So I cleaned out all the way back right there. Still no indication. I did find one rock that seemed a bit heavier than it should have been. And I, uh, you know, broke it open and it's definitely got some sphalerite or something like that inside of it. It's not really the pyrites, definitely not the quartz. It's got to be right here somewhere. Probably behind all of that debris though. So maybe try over there. So as I start cleaning up a bit farther here, I'm still finding pieces of quartz all the way up there. So the odds are the quartz didn't move from down below up top, that moved from up top down. So the seam is probably still up there somewhere. I'm gonna vacuum in there and see what I find. Now, as I go down deeper, I am finding more quartz. I am also finding some pyrotite chunks. That's just solid iron. A little bit of quartz on top, lots of quartz. Had a big chunk of quartz here somewhere. Now it's lost. There's definitely more pyrotite, more quartz, more quartz. I'm definitely getting closer to the source. Keep finding these great chunks of quartz coming out of here. That's where the gold is in that quartz. I'm getting lots of it out of that hole. So we're on the right path, that's for sure. Well, I kind of wish I was on this hole right from the beginning. It is doing well. I'm finding so much evidence of the actual seam down there, which also means there will be more gold in this material than what I got originally. But it's full again, and that's all the buckets I have to fill up and take out of here. So I'm hoping to take four back to the truck, and I think when I consolidate the back of the truck, I'll probably have three right full ones. That gives me a uh, empty bucket for tomorrow's expedition. That hole seems to be where it's at in the future. Maybe move that and that and then go down through there more and see if I can find that seam, which is kind of in the right spot. Just so much slough above that I have to deal with. 
Anyhow, this is a great way to collect the material. This vacuum is doing a marvelous job and it's not so much, you know, physical strong arm work. Although I still have to carry it down the hill, which is physical strong leg work. Hmm. Yep, someday it might be worth manhandling that log out of there, rolling those rocks aside, clearing from where I know the seam is and just tracing all the way across and seeing what I find. But I'm definitely, you know, down onto much more lucrative material down there. There will be gold in there. There will be some nice gold in there. Now this stuff I'm collecting right now actually isn't the stuff that I make my pater bags out of. No, I will be processing this through a high banker, through, you know, the gold cube, through a newfangled tool I got from Gold Hog. Probably use that actually. I will be processing this somehow and recovering the gold out of it. It's not placer gold. It's hard rock gold that has naturally weathered out of the quartz and the pyrotite. So it still looks perfectly like the hard rock gold. Angular, sharp, crystalline. The stuff I use for making my pay dirt bags from the blue chip mine here is actually the quartz seam itself crushed down. It's quartz crush and it has gold in it too, but it's not enough. So what I do after I fill a bag of the quartz crush is I take some of this stuff that's naturally weathered out and put it in on top. And that way you're guaranteed to have gold in every bag. But again, I was running out of the free gold material. So I need to go and, you know, collect some more. That's what I'm doing today. But I think I'm also going to go across to add it number five, which really isn't an add it, it's just a divot in the mountainside over there, and uh, see if I can get some specimens as well. Due to a small lack of buckets, I have to carry that bucket back, and I have to carry that material still in the vacuum. Down the big hill without falling. Wish me luck. Absolutely love this generator. If you ever need a good generator, the Honda 2000. Quiet, powerful, reliable, it's the way to go. One bucket on. Well, there you go. Consolidated down the four sort of buckets that were three quarters full, make three buckets right full, ish. And that is what's gonna have to do to get me enough gold to last until, you know, the next harvest here, which will probably be spring. Well, let's hope it's enough. Now back with the hammer and chisel and pry bars and whatnot, and see if I can get some blue chip gold ore specimens. Sometimes we're lucky enough to actually see gold on them. Let's see what we can find. So I wanna get my specimens up, you know, by at it five, but you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, there's a chunk right there. This part of the seam has produced some of the biggest pieces of gold out of the whole mine. And I see a piece I think I can break free. So let's get a specimen from here too. <laughs> well, that was a lot easier than I expected. There is a specimen of gold ore from the blue chip mine, from the seam that shows the biggest pieces of gold when you're lucky enough to get them. And I think there's one more just ready to come to. Two pieces of gold ore. Let's go for three. Make that three and four. Oh, and that's where you find the gold, in pockets just like that. Again, pockets just like that is where the gold hangs out. So here is the stereotypical piece of gold-bearing quartz vein. It's got pyrite through it, it's got sulfide through it, it's got rust all through it. That's the type of thing that bears gold. And if you see these little pockets of rust, that's typically where the gold will form, especially in the blue chip mine here. There's one, two, three, four, Five, that's kind of one over there too. Six pockets, any one of those could have gold. And this one has some bigger pockets too. One big pocket, another big pocket. Little one over there. Again, that's what you're looking for, for gold ore. And if you zoom right in on these pockets, that's when you sometimes may get the chance to see gold, if I weren't shaking so much. My goodness, I'm shaking a lot. 
Now, unfortunately, at it five, which is nothing more than this just little dip in the hill, I jokingly call it an at it, someday it might be, but at it five looks to have a lot of work before I can actually get at any of the material. A lot of slough has come back in in the last year and a half. Looks like a lot of digging. This wall right here was loaded in gold. It had a layer of quartz on the surface of it, and every time I broke a piece of quartz off the surface, I would see gold in that quartz. This was by far the most visible gold I've seen on this claim. But, unfortunately, the face ran out, and now to get more of it, I have to go down, which is going to be significant work. And I don't know if I have it in me today to shovel all that. Maybe I'll go over here. There's a really nice piece of pyrotite over here that hopefully is less digging to get to. So I happen to know at the bottom of this little divot right here, there is a very nice chunk of pyrotite. That's an iron pyrite, a special kind of iron pyrite, right jet black. It always sets off my metal detector when I'm up here. Not all pyrites set off metal detectors. Pyrotite does really loudly. Sounds like, you know, there's a Sherman tank buried right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear that away. Just my shovel, just scrape it all back. See if I can expose it and see if any of the pieces are exposed enough that we can get a good sample off it. So one of two things has happened here. My brain is failing me because I sure remember a chunk of pyrotite right there. Or I harvested it already. I got it already. Or someone got it already. I still see some little evidence around. I'll dig some more and see if I can find where it is. So I may have found a chunk of it right there. I don't quite know. Oh, yeah, that chunk right there. Yep, there we go. There's the pyrotite. One big huge big huge a big huge chunk of iron pyrite pyrotite is actually what it is well i'm gonna dig more of that stuff and see if i can get some specimens of pyrotite there's a great specimen smaller but you know it's got the quartz and the pyrotite together that's really when you find the gold Ooh, ah, dropped it don't think that's gold maybe it's kind of what it would look like if it was okay i see some of the seam now in situ which means in place I'm gonna bring the chisels down here and see if I can break off some chunks. Well, that's definitely the mass of pyrotite that I was expecting to see down here. Just a case of whether or not I can get off specimens or if it's all just gonna crumble like that. Hopefully there's still some quartz in it too. There's the quartz. That is all pure tight along the back here. There's a nice specimen. Lots of the pure tight, some of the quartz. That's where we find the gold. Okay, this might produce something nice. Lots of material. Let's hope for specimens. Oh yeah. There it is. There's the best specimen so far. Absolutely. I think I may even see some gold on it. Let's check this out. Hard to say, but that could be gold in the pyrotite there. I think it is. Visible gold. That's what we're looking for. Look at this specimen. You can't beat that. If you want it, it'll be up for auction on my website. www.danherdprospecting.com and sometimes in the really weathered out pyrotites, the gold just jumps out and shines at you because it doesn't weather. It stays shiny, where the pyrotite rusts, goes black. And another pretty nice one. Now here's one with pyrite, pyrotite, and quartz all in one. Again, perfect pyrite, pyrotite, and quartz. This will have to be the last one. Mosquitoes are getting me. In a way I can't handle. Whew. Whew. What do we get? Lots of oh, ah, there it is. And to end it off, one last good.
nice piece. Now I gotta get out of these mosquitoes. They're driving me bonkers. That might be a piece of gold right there. Wouldn't that be nice? End it off with a piece of gold. Not a bad little pile of, you know, pyrotite, pyrite, and quartz specimens. Let's put them in the bag and get out of here. And of course, that hole will be there for the next time I come and I can harvest some more. Love the scenery here. So lush and green. So different than back the Okanagan where I come from, where it's dry and hot. Now I know many of my viewers hate it when I collect material like this on video and then don't show you the results. So let's do a time warp home right now, run that material through one of the machines and see what it has in it for gold. Gold from the blue chip mine. Yes, the blue chip mine. To recover the gold from this material today, I will be using Gold Hog's new tool, the bore box. Yes, this tool is not currently on the market. I am helping in the sort of testing stage of it. They're still developing it. Hopefully this fall, it'll be out to market on their website. About $400 for the bore box. But if you want to see videos on the bore box, go check out my channel. Today, I'm just using it to recover the gold. Well, it took about 15 minutes to run the first bucket through and it ran through very smoothly. No issues, no problems. This uh, bore box working well. I have some suggestions for, for a gold hog on it, but in general, the machine is working great. Let's get the other two buckets and run it all through. Bucket number two done. That took about 25 minutes to run the first two buckets. And the machine seems to be handling it just fine. Again, if you want to know how this machine works, check out my previous video on it. There we be. Three buckets in about 40 minutes. Not bad. You know, for all of the suggestions I had for Gold Hog in my last video to make their machine better, uh, which they, you know, heck, they've already sent me a new plate. They're already on it. But for all of those suggestions, this machine as is, is working fantastic. That was really quick. Ran through that material in no time. I don't like the small hopper, but it worked. I would prefer a bigger hopper, but you know what they have worked and no complaints. Research and development team from GoHog, you're doing a great job. Stay tuned for more videos on the evaluation of this machine though. Oops, I let my tailings bucket overflow. It does take about five minutes to, you know, take off all the wing nuts and undo the machine, rinse all the mats out, and then put it all back together again. But really, if you're using a, a gold cube, you're going to be every bit as long as that, you know, rinsing out the, the mats. These things rinse out much huh, easier. There we go. Now I am not evaluating the machine today, so I've just rinsed all the mats out. I'm not checking the top ones versus the top bottom. I'm not going through my tailings to see what it missed. I did all of that in my other videos. Today, I'm just using the machine to get the gold. And there you are. That's about the cons you get out of the machine. What is that? Maybe two to three cups of material? Two cups. Two cups of material. And we're gonna pan that out in the panning tub. Let's see what kind of gold I found. There we are. Really nice crystalline chunky gold. Not as much as I'd hoped for in that though. So I'm definitely gonna have to go back for another trip this year and get more material for my pay dirt bags because that will not be enough to fill many. Though it does look like I missed a few pieces back there. Oh yes, there's another one over here too. So there's a bit more. I just didn't do a very good job of cleaning it up. And because in that vacuumed material, we ended up with some really nice looking juicy quartz ore samples that I guarantee have some gold in them. I will use the crazy crusher, crush it down into a powder and use this unsearched in my pay dirt bags along with the rest of the material I already have.
Good looking gold ore I'm crushing. There will be gold in there. And from the mouth of Addit number three, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching. A big extra thanks to my patrons out there. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these trips and these videos and make this content for everyone on YouTube to watch. So thank you patrons, I love your support. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned your subscription today. And there will be more videos coming from the blue chip mine now that I can get back in here. So look forward to them in the future. So until then, bye.